Here at the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch, we've been very intrigued by the role of eye worms and sequel worms. These are two round worms that are being found in quail. And uh, over the last seven or eight years, we've spent a lot of time, effort, and money trying to determine just what the impact of these worms are to quail. And are they that X factor that everybody's looking at to explain what happened to the quail situation in many parts of Texas and beyond. So beginning last January, we thought we were having a real eye worm epidemic, if you will. And we began to solicit heads from quail hunters, quail heads from quail hunters across West Texas. And we basically said, if you think you've got eye worms, send us your heads, we'll go through those and then send you back the results. And so we accumulated about 800 quail heads and uh, with that and a grant from one of our directors, Joe Crafton, we thank him for his support. We were able to hire this young lady, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer Newkirk is from the University of Florida, a recent graduate from down there. And we brought Jennifer on with the task of being able to look through all these heads and some carcasses to be able to give us a good assay of what the uh, worm abundance is in these birds. So Jennifer, we got these 800 quail heads from hunters. They sent them down here. Now you've got one. I'd like for you to tell us first of all about what we call the crafting technique for as a, as a technique for being able to examine the eyes in the field and get some indication as to whether or not the birds have eye worms. So tell us what you're doing here. So I'm going to start with my thumb on either side of the eye and I'm going to use it to just kind of massage the eye on either side and just push out any worms that I can see. So you can see there's one right there okay. on the top of the eye. So I'm going to take my forceps, I'm going to remove it and put it in the petri dish. Well, one thing you, you see right away is these are not microscopic worms, are they? No, they're not. They're three quarters of an inch long or so. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I think that you know there's probably no more that I can get out just using my thumbs up. Oh, there's another one showing up. And so these worms, uh, initially we thought they were just kind of living in the front of the eye and under that third eyelid we call the nictitating membrane. But really these worms you're getting are probably, is, are they coming from that front of the eye? Or are they coming from the back of the eye? Where are they coming from? So these ones seem to be coming out from underneath the nictitating membrane. Okay, which is that third membrane of, of a quail and, right. and birds. And so that's typically what we're going to look at for our second method, Okay, is that membrane. Um, but for the first craft and technique, so we got two from the right eye. And, and you're going to keep those over here? And, yeah, I, okay. I keep a, one petri dish for okay. each and side. Of course, this is a, for our formal use uh, in the field. You'd just be interested to know whether or not you've got some. Mm -hmm. Was it two or 22 kind of thing? Right. So I'm going to do the crafting method again on the left eye. There's one showing up right there. So I'm going to pull that out, put it in. You can and so again, you're just gently massaging above and below the eyeball mm -hmm. and basically just pushing out any worms that are residing in and around the, the, the orbit of the eye. Right. So there's some more showing up. There's one. And then I'll typically just write it down. I keep a, a uh, list of the number of worms for each eye, craft them, technique, and then the second technique, and then the third technique. So I'm keeping data for each of that. Okay. Was this an adult or juvenile? This is. We're looking at the age of the wing to determine that. So that's why we asked that a wing be submitted. An adult. That's an adult bird. As are most of our quail this year. We did not raise very many quail last year. Okay, and it had how many based on the craft technique? So we had two in the right eye okay. and three in the left eye. Okay. Yep. So again, in the field, we've documented that we, we had some. Now, what we don't know is how accurate is that technique, so we've come up with some improvements. One of our quail master students came up with the uh, idea of using one of these little dental floss picks and using that as a probe to be able to go around the eye and see if that was more effective than just doing it with your thumbnails. So talk to us about how you do that. So with this, I use, this is um, mostly to go under the nictitating membrane. So I'll just kind of slide it in and I can pull up and move it around the eye. And usually you can see if there's any in there, if there's any worms in there, and this will help us grab them out. 
So, I'm, oh, there's one. So I got one with this. Okay, and so again, we're interested to know, does this enhance our accuracy? By, and if so, by how much? So that's what part of your study is involving. Right. So there I got one with the dental pick on the right side. And then on the left side. You know, this can also be the crack. There's one for the, for the left side. Um, the craft and technique, depending on how, you know, thorough you are, you could maybe get them out, but a lot of times they're kind of, you know, can be pretty far up. And this also helps if there's something with the eye, maybe it was shot or it's real bloody or the skull's crushed and you can't necessarily do the crafted method, this will help you go in and kind of scoop out okay. whatever. And those there. are just, you can pick those up at your uh, local discount store or whatever, just in the dental accessories and uh, pretty handy little yes. field technique. Okay? Yeah, it's pretty cool. So based upon your, your external examination, you came up with an additional what? So we've one. got one for the right eye okay. and two for the left eye. Okay. So that brings us to a total, if my arithmetic is correct, of uh, three and five is eight total worms based on our external assessment. And now part of your study would then be to take this bird and do a complete necropsy of the head, mm -hmm. and that's our standard. You know, if we do that, we're interested to know again, did these external field techniques, were they accurate as far as defining whether or not we really did have eye worms or not? And were they a good predictor? If this one had a total of eight eye worms, how many does it actually have via necropsy? So start with us and tell us how you necropsy a head to determine how many eye worms it's got. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I have um, curved scissors that are just a bit easier to use. Um, and I open the mouth using uh, my thumb to kind of pull the neck down. And I'm just going to cut the top beak off right across where the feathers start. So that's my first step. And then from there, I'm going to go in. Um, on the side of the skulls, there's a couple holes, just openings. Right above the upper mandible where there's a little bit of bone left, cut that down on both sides. And then this tissue that's connecting, I'll just snip that. So now I can get the head completely open. So I have better access to the eyes this way. Okay. And because, again, we, we've learned over the last seven or eight years that the bulk of these worms are probably residing behind the eyeball in a couple of glands back there behind the eye. Right. They're typically in the tissues of the eye, or tissues behind the eye. Um, the lacrimal duct is one of the main ones, as well as the hardarian gland. Okay. And these are important glands uh, that help quail in a number of ways, not only tear secretion, but uh, potentially even antibody production. So. Uh, if if we've got infections there that could be causing some pathology for the quail and they're also located right next to the optic nerve so if we have a lot of worms in there just the swelling from that could be impacting the optic nerve and then obviously impacting the vision of the brain. Right, right. Um, so my next step I always stick start with the right eye and do everything to the right eye and then switch so I'm going to start with the right eye and I'm going to cut the corner of the eyelid down just kind of to open it up more so it's easier to remove the eyeball. And then I'm going to take my curved forceps and into the back corner of the eye is where the optic nerve is. So you just kind of want to poke your forceps in there, grab it by the opti optic nerve and pull it out that way. And then I want to try to get as, many of, as much of the tissues out as I can as I'm removing the eye. And then I'm going to just pull it out drop it in my petri dish and if there's a little tissue left I will just add that as well to the petri dish. Now this is obviously uh, eye worm 202 not the field technique so this is going a little more in depth than what your average hunter would want to do but again from a research standpoint we want to know what the total number of eye worms this bird actually had. Right. Um, so I'm going to start with the right eye and pretty much my technique is to just shred the tissue because the the worms are going to be in the tissue so you want to just shred the tissue and make sh try to get all the worms out that you can and make sure that you get them all. Um, Since we don't have a wearing blender to shred it in, you're going to do it by hand, right. I guess, all right? Just get after it. So I use my curved forceps to hold the eye 
and then my uh, straight forceps to pull because my straight forceps are gripped. That's just the technique or the, the way that I've become most comfortable with. So then I'm just going to take all this tissue, just shred it up. There's a worm that just came out there. Some of that tissue almost looks like a worm. How do, how do you know which is which? So um, sometimes you can just tell by looking at it, the tissue might be a bit thicker, might not be uniform in length. Ooh. And then um, the other way that I usually um, use to tell is the worms will be very turgid if you take them with your forceps and you know they're, they're going to kind of hold their shape. Okay. But if you take a tissue and you move it around, it's going to twirl around itself and um, you know, be a lot more flimsy. Okay. So that's kind of how you can tell between uh, tissue and worms, but it is, it can be a bit tricky and a bit hard to tell the difference. It's now you mentioned the, the tear duct and the hardarian gland. Uh, mm -hmm. are, is that what we're dissecting right now? So, or can you demonstrate those for us? Yes, so this actually right here is the lacrimal duct. And so I've already pulled a couple worms out of it. I like to refer to it as like a parasite pinata. Like it's typically, that's okay. where all the worms are gonna be. Um, sometimes when it's real full, you know, see here's another one per poking out. So when it's real full, you can tell it'll be pretty swollen. Um, there's another one. And you can just kind of rip it in half sometimes. See there's another one poking out. Um, if you rip it in half, all the worms will come out the middle. And so this is the lacrimal duct. So this is typically what I will go for, you know, right away to make sure I get most of the worms. Okay. Um, this tissue is all pretty thin. You can pretty much tell that there's not going to be anything in there. And then I just want to continue with the eye, pulling it, pulling all the tissues off, and pulling them apart. Now it's not just the lacrimal duct where the worms are going to be. They will be other places, but that's the hot spot for them. They will just be, you know, throughout the tissues. And again, we did a, a video on this about seven or eight years ago, but at that time, we didn't know about them residing behind the eye. We were just looking under that third eyelid, and mm -hmm. since that time, we found out that that's literally just the tip of the iceberg as far as finding the, the eye worms. Right, and one of the reasons is once the bird dies, the worms try to exit the body, right. correct? And so that's why you'll see them at the front of the eye. I mean, uh, some of these and, and some of the ones that Joe Crafter initially sent us, just by doing that technique, you know, it looked like there were probably 20 or 25 eye worms trying to get out. And, that, and that's a pretty uh, memorable sight when you see a quail with that kind of eye worm load. Mm -hmm. So now is when I feel pretty confident that I've got all the tissues off of the eye and I've shredded the eye or the tissues as much as possible and I, I have all the worms out. So next thing I'm going to do is count them. I've got one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got ten worms ten from the right. The right. Eye. Okay. Yes. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the left eye. Okay. Same steps and everything. And like I mentioned before, as I keep it separate, just so I. Now, one thing, Jennifer, I noticed in these is they're not all the same size. I mean, I'm, apparently we have some adult worms, and then maybe some in some juvenile stage or larval stage. So, mm -hmm. when was this bird killed? February uh, February third, two thousand eighteen. And this one came from where? It came from Ronalds County. Ronalds County. Okay. So again, uh, we're interested to know where are the county level hot spots based on these. And this is what Jennifer Study is doing. Is we hope to generate heat maps, if you will, of where the infections are the most abundant. And uh, that's going to be intelligence that we'll use as we work and, and get towards this medicated feed that's being worked on. And we're fairly close to having that medicated feed, which is going to kill the eye worms. And so we want to be able to give the, the landowner some intelligence, you know, some uh, d does he have a problem or not. And so he can do that, again, with the crafting technique and get some indication or send those birds to us. And we're going to do these full necropsies to better understand those relationships. Jennifer, as you've gone through these 800 or so heads, what's the, what's the maximum number and maybe the average number at this point? that you're discovering in these birds? Um, I would say average would be maybe somewhere around 20, 25 total. Um, and the maximum, I wanna say, 
I think I found like a hundred okay. or something in, in total in one bird. So an average of 20 or so, that's about three times higher than when we first started studying this back in 2009 and 10. The average at that point in time was about six worms per bird. So uh, for whatever reason, uh, the, these birds have an increased number of eye worms. So here I am getting to the hardarian gland and I'm pulling, you know, some, a lot of, it's a small gland, but you know, it's got, at least this one had about three or four worms in it, which makes up a, you know, half the total of worms. So again, once I feel confident that I've got all the tissues shredded and pulled it, pulled off as much tissue as I can from the eye, I can go ahead and count um, and see how many I've got. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten again. Okay, so ten plus the five we discovered externally, so a total of fifteen. No. Or just ten. Ten what, total. Ten plus right now, okay. So that's it, we had ten worms in both eyes. Okay, so again, just to recap, we've taken this bird which came to us from Ronalds County. Uh, externally we found uh, two or three worms. And then when we did the dissection of the necropsy, we found an additional six or seven worms. So we were discovering about half of the worms that the bird actually had. In this one. Okay, at in least. this one, right. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll, we're looking at that, you're looking at that over a total of 800 worms. So we should have a fairly strong relationship or a strong evaluation of just how predictive these, these relationships are. Mm -hmm. I would say for birds that do have, you know, maybe 30, 40 worms in them, um, I would maybe find 10 or so, you know, I, I wouldn't find half, I don't think. Okay. This one, you know, since there weren't that many worms that we did, but um, when there's a lot of worms, you don't typically find all of them. So, as you're quail hunting or whatever, you've learned a technique now where you can use your thumbnails at the end of the day's hunt, do that manipulation, that crafting technique, or use the dental pick like that and be able to get a decent indication about wh whether or not your birds have eye worms or not. doesn't necessarily tell you how many total, but it suggests that uh, if you find anywhere from 5 to 10 externally, you've probably got another 15 to 20 or more behind the eye. The eye worm situation, what we found from our surveillance effort during 2018 was that we're in the epicenter of the eye worm dilemma right here in the lower rolling plains, roughly from Sweetwater up towards Childress. The heart of the Rolling Plains Quail Country had the worst eye worms. And so again, we've studied various techniques, both complete uh, dissections versus this what I call crafting technique or Newsom technique from looking at the birds externally once you got them in your hand to determine if they had eye worms. The crafting technique where you massage the uh, outer eyelids and so forth after the bird's been dead, maybe two hours, that proved to be about 72% accurate in finding those eye worms. Now you can't estimate how many eye worms it had, but as far as just saying it did or it didn't have eye worms, about 72% of the time it was accurate in, uh, in being able to discern that. Then when we run the little dental floss, uh, the little dental toothpick up underneath that third eyelid, what we call the Newsom technique, it proved to be about 12% more effective. So by using that, our accuracy went up to about 84% based on that. So there are two external techniques that will give you a pretty good idea of whether or not your uh, birds, once you shoot them and you put them in the bag, uh, you'll be able to do those external techniques and find out whether or not you got a major eye worm problem. Uh, we'll be continuing that experiment into 2019. Stay up to date with us on the Rolling Plains Quail Research website or our Facebook page, and we'll be telling you how you can uh, submit birds for testing.